This video is going to outline directed evolution of enzymes and proteins. I'm going to start with some pictures and I'm going to give you an explanation. So there's four steps, and this is based on Francis Arnold's work, which I'll post in the description. So you have your DNA. And a random mutation is introduced in the gene for the enzyme that will be changed. So you've got your DNA. And you're going to put a mutation in it. So the green is going to be mutation. Step two is that these genes are inserted into bacteria which uses them as templates to produce randomly mutated enzymes. So imagine this. This is your DNA or whatever and you've got you know a few mutations in it. This is not your homologous model so yeah you've got all these mutations so step number three is the enzymes so these ones have they've been altered they're tested and those that are they have that have desired characteristics they are kept so what i mean by that is say we're trying to find something that well, lowers the activation energy of the reaction. We're not going to take the enzyme that increases the activation energy or one that doesn't work, those sort of things. So step three, you've got your, um, what would be a screening plate, and you would screen them all. And you would see okay, this one works, and this one works, and so does that. So we're going to keep them ones. All of these ones, they're empty circles, they're discarded. So they're going to go into the bin. Yeah. Step four is this process repeats itself again. So these, there's going to be new random mutations that are introduced into the genes for selected enzymes. So the cycle is going to begin again. So imagine this, you know, let's say the activation energy before was 500 kilojoules per mole. Right, this is uncatalyzed because an enzyme is a protein that acts as a biological catalyst. And then we do one cycle of this and then it goes down to, let's say, 495 kilojoules per mole. And it's decreased. And, you know, we're going to go... Maybe there's like 20 iterative cycles and this will take it all the way down to 300 kilojoules per mole for the transition state. And that, that doesn't seem very significant, but on a large scale, that is actually quite huge. Huge. So as I said, step number four, you just, you know, you just, you crack on with it again. You put a new mutation in and you go again. Thank you.